The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do, so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. So he called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, How much do you owe my master? He replied, One hundred measures of olive oil. He said to him, Here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for fifty. Then to another the steward said, And you, how much do you owe? He replied, One hundred cores of wheat. The steward said to him, Here is your promissory note. Write one for eighty. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you will become welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If, therefore, you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. The Gospel of the Lord. Before I entered the seminary a number of years ago, I first taught at a small liberal arts college in Michigan, and then I practiced law in that town in central Michigan called Alma. It was like most other small towns in this country in that most people knew everybody else's business. Obviously, that had its good points because people tended to be aware of other people's hurts and heartaches, their needs and wants. People tended to reach out to each other with a helping hand more readily than they might do and might be true in a large city. But it also had its drawbacks. Reputations were easily lost. 
and not easily regained. If one had bad dealings with an individual, it would not be too long before everybody in town knew about it. And the ability of that person to continue in business was just about impossible. That is similar to the circumstances surrounding the steward in today's gospel. He too lives in a small village, and he was a functionary who worked for the landlord. It was his job to keep things running smoothly. He saw to it that tenant farmers, tenant farmers rather, paid a certain portion of their crop to the landlord. But he was caught in misconduct, and what he did was serious enough that the landlord fired him on the spot and demanded that the books be brought to him immediately. The steward was in a panic. He had nowhere to go. When we leave one job, we can generally move to another one or to another town to look for one. But that was unthinkable in this case. He could not move out of the village where he had been born and raised. He also knew that there were no other jobs open to him at the level he currently enjoyed. He knew that he was not capable of tilling the earth and tilling the fields as a hired hand. And he was ashamed to beg. There was only one option that he could see. Throw himself on the mercy of the townsfolk. He devised a plan that would endear himself to his neighbors. He told each of them to write down a lesser amount of what he owed when the crops were harvested. Interestingly enough, the master commended him. And much to our amazement, Jesus holds this up as an example to follow. The shrewdness of this rogue seems to be canonized. But why? There isn't much to admire here. The manager is simply devoid of moral scruples. Surely Jesus is not suggesting that fraud is something to emulate. Yet there is something about him that Jesus wants his disciples to admire. His shrewdness. The man is a rascal, but he's a clever rascal. Jesus' disciples are encouraged to emulate his shrewdness his cleverness, but for different purposes. Apparently, Jesus was thinking something like this. This rogue acted with shrewd foresight. If only my followers would do the same thing in the service of God. The effort and the ingenuity of the steward are worth considering. The Lord praises this philosophy in order to lament another failing. If only we would spend as much energy and ingenuity on attaining heavenly things as we do earthly ones. If only we were as concerned with our ultimate end as we are of our temporal needs, our temporal ends. Our spiritual journey is unfortunately too often marked by a lack of energy. And, G and Christ is saying in this parable, give to God's kingdom the same effort you would give to the world. Do those of you who are students here today believe that the work you put into faith formation is at least as important as the work you put into your classwork? Do you believe that the effort that you put into your careers is not as important as the effort that, would, that should be put into knowing God? Are we as concerned with our place in God's kingdom as we are with our standing within the community? We must constantly remind ourselves that every circumstance of our lives can become training on the road to immortality. Jesus extends this principle in today's gospel and his teaching when he tells us, the one who is faithful in small things will be faithful in that which is important as well. Notice how little we know concerning the relative importance of events and duties. We too often use the terms great and small and even totally awesome when it was in vogue. In speaking of our actions, our occasions, our places, only in reference to the outward look 
and the first impression. We are generally ignorant of the real significance of the events we think we understand. I'm sure that almost every person here today can recollect one or more instances where his or her life was turned by some single word or some incident so trivial as scarcely to be noticed at the time. The outward appearance of occasions and duties is, in fact, almost of no index of importance, and our judgment concerning what is great or what is small are often irrelevant. And if we think about our lives, it is also to be observed, even as the world judges, small things constitute almost the whole of our life. The great days of, year, of the year, for example, are few. And when and they come, they seldom live up to expectations of being anything great for us. And the total of all of our days is made up of little, ordinary circumstances. But God, God is observant of small things. Jesus tells us he upholds the sparrow's wings. He clothes the lily with his beautifying hand and numbers the hair in our heads. The works and words of Christ are, if possible, a still brighter illustration of the same truth. And the importance of living for God in ordinary and small things is seen in the fact that our individual character, which is what we bring ultimately before God, is in its very nature a growth. There has never been a great or beautiful character which has become so, become so without filling well the old ordinary and the smaller duties of life. It is very certain that if you have it, you walk with God. In the humblest occasions of your this life, it is certain that you will be filled with God's Spirit always. Note the people you know or are aware of who never thrust themselves into the limelight by the very single big acts, yet have a commanding influence and leave a deep and lasting impression on the people they know, and often even the world. They are the ones who live for God in the common things of their daily life, as well as the more extraordinary circumstances they encounter. And their attention to honoring God in humble things is stronger proof to us of their uprightness than the most distinguished acts or services. We all know people like that, and we know how much we love and admire them for who they are. So today, let us renew our pledge to God to be faithful in all responsibilities of our lives, that we will keep things in proper perspective, that we will come to a better understanding of what is truly important, that we will recognize that everything we do is in God's service. And if we do this, our lives will be a reflection to all that we are God's humble stewards, living a life of dutiful service.